Hello everybody, today we will be going over some blind 75 questions on Leetcode in C++ and today we are focusing on best time to buy and sell stock. You are given an array of prices where prices I is the price of a given stock on the ith day. You want to maximize your profit by choosing a single day to buy one stock and choosing a different day in the future to sell the stock. Return the maximum profit you can achieve from this transaction. Uh, if you cannot achieve any profit, return zero. So before we get started, I'm just going to give a formulation. Input. What data structure slash algorithm slash technique will we use? What to do with the data and then output. All right, so now just to break up the whole question over what we need to do is that one, we can decipher that our given input is your given an array of prices where price is i is the price of a given stock on i day. So we are initially given an array of stock prices. And now we will continue over the question to understand and answer our second question, what data structure slash algorithm slash technique we're gonna use. And uh, looking at the examples of what we have to understand the whole relationship we're trying to express within our C++ solution is that we have an array of prices to start with that are on a given series of days, but again, uh, the days are just the indices that we need and what we're trying to output is we are trying to return the maximum profit you can achieve from the following transaction as a result from prices within our array. Um, okay, so within our input, we have seven, one, five, three, six, four, and arrays always typically start with zero. So we have our output being five, which is the maximum profit that we have. And why is that? Well, according to the explanation, we buy on day two. So we start on price one because we are accounting for this day that we have so we actually sell on day five which is uh right here since we go instead of actually starting with zero we are just counting up all the arrays because they account for a single day so we have one two three four and five all the way to six and then we subtract the difference and then we have five and mind you also something that they note is that buying on day two and selling on day one is not allowed because one in order to make a profit you need to buy prior to selling and then so that means we obviously cannot go back in time. It can only go forward just with what we have. And in the case of uh, example two, we have a series of prices to begin with of seven, six, four, three, and one, and the output is zero. So in this case, we don't have any transactions and therefore the uh, max profit is zero because all the prices are going down directly to zero. So I believe that the best way to be able to solve this is going to be the greedy algorithm. Um, where the greedy algorithm uh, is basically a uh, technique where one can actually find a way with any given set of data to branch out and find as many possibilities of, um, of decisions within uh, the given context of the problem that they have. I'll explain more over what we need to do. For We have already decided for the, uh, what we are going to do with the data is that we will iterate over the number of stock prices given the fact that we have an array and keep track of the min uh, price, the minimum price encountered so far because one, the prices can actually change over time. So there may be one day that we need to consider uh, where we have one day that may be less than the next day. For example, we have six and then we have one. So while we are just iterating through the entire array. Um, and while we are keeping track of the min price encountered thus far, um, we are also considering other possibilities for the maximum profit we can achieve. And then our given output over what we need to do is the maximum profit. from buying, selling the stock. So now 
we are going to be going over some pseudocode to be able to start. So let's just start from the beginning over what we need to do. So within the first step, what we need is that in the first step of our pseudo, uh, pseudocode is that we need to initialize the variables, which will be the min price, which um, will be a positive infinity because the reason being is that uh, one, in order to actually have said minimum price, we're not going to have negative prices to be able to start. And then we will also in initialize our max profit. Can keep it as a. We can keep it at zero, uh, our max profit, because we have an edge case where we need to consider uh, if one cannot achieve a profit, they would therefore have to return zero. And now just giving over for the next part that we would need. Okay, is that in the section what we will do with the data uh, to be able to start? Is that... find the maximum profit. And to do so, what we will do is that we're going to create a for loop at one point is that for each price in the array, we're going to update the minimum price And then we're going to calculate the current profit as the difference between the current price and the minimum price for the max profit is going to be equal to current price minus min price. We already know in particular, and as usual for arrays, one can actually decipher between set problems. If one, they already know, particularly the variables that are inside of the array, if they already know one, they can decipher between the other relationships of the numbers thus far, such as having a profit where we are able to understand between the minimum price and the maximum price, uh, so that way we can uh, un be able to get our current price, since we already have that relationship set in stone. And then finally, for 2C, we're going to update the maximum profit if the current profit is higher. Because we have to consider other possibilities at the same time since we are going with the greedy algorithm approach. And output, it's already explained pretty well. We're going to be returning that. And therefore, uh, we will be um, returning the max profit. So now I'm just going to keep all the pseudocode. I'm just going to move it. I'll just move it up here. Maybe just down here, just for reference. There we go. OK, so first things first, we're going to initialize our variables that we need. So I'm just going to put this right here. that we have the int min price. We are going to do something pretty interesting uh, to start with. So since we are initializing all of our variables, we would have to declare them as zero to even start with. So there is a technique in C++, namely, where uh, it's called int max, where it's going to have the maximum value of, um, of, of the set variables that we need in order to be able to solve a problem. So this is just a technique that's inside of the STL library that people can also look up and then further understand at the same time. So now we are gonna head over to our second step over here since we initialized both of our variables to start with. Let's just put it right here. We're gonna find the maximum profit and we're gonna build a for loop. So for It's going to be equal to zero. 
i minus prices dot size and then i plus plus to begin with and then we also need to consider the uh, updating the um, min price and the way we will be doing that is that we're going to be having a boolean condition of here where if the prices since we have a vector of prices to begin with if the prices of i is going to be less than the um, max prof or it's going to be less than the min price we're going to redeclare the min price and therefore make it into prices i so that way we can have that relationship already set in place then in the other case if the prices of i since we need to discern the relationship between both the um, min and max if the prices of i um, minus min price since we are deciphering our relationship already since max profit is equal to the current price minus the min price um, what we will then do is that we're going to update our max profit and then if we redeclare over here max profit equal prices of i minus in min price And finally, what we are going to be doing is that we finally return the max profit. Right, let's clean up all this white space. That's just good coding practice right over here. Okay, so to be able to start, I can uh, further clean up this at the same time, but I think the notes will actually be able to help. So uh, for further reference at the same time, I can just have our initial solution over here. I just want to be sure if I have this already copied and pasted. This is what our solution will look like. It's going to put the pseudocode steps over here to begin with. And we're going to run this. All right, it passes all the test cases. And finally, we will submit. There we go. Okay. And it beats a lot of other solutions at the same time, and it's also pretty efficient. Okay, so to go, to go over the space complexity of this, since actually greedy algorithms um, are uh, actually pretty, pretty efficient to start with, our space complexity for this is, um, is going to be linear, O of 1, uh, just given the fact that we're just scanning throughout the rest of the array uh, to start with, because we already have our conditions already defined, such as understanding between the max profit and already knowing what the min profit is. And it's going to be linear because we don't have any data structure uh, that we're using to be able to store exactly set information. And the time complexity is going to be constant, which is O of n, because n refers to the number of indices within the array. And depending on the expansion of set array on X amount of numbers, uh, it's going to vary base. Your uh, solution is going to um, run slower. Therefore, the, uh, the bigger the array is, um, the slower uh, the type of program we'll be able to run. So constant is uh, pretty good in terms of efficiency. And um, in terms of uh, further optimizing this, uh, we have optimized it pretty well, and there's no need for any other uh, further optimization given the space and uh, time complexity of what we have. Uh, so thank you again uh, for tuning in. If you have any other questions at the same time or anything else that uh, you would like for me to go over, feel free to put them in the comments, like, and subscribe. And as always, um, we'll see you again in the next video. Cheers.